Hello, today I want to show you how to use Alpine's store property to manage a global state. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the application that I've created to display the store property. So all it is is a button that says it's my birthday and it updates and iterates the age of our person. So when I press is my birthday, it's my birthday, then it just iterates the age. Go back to the code, I'll show you how this works and how I'm managing the person as a global state. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is import Alpine.js. You can do this via npm, you can do this via uh, CDN as I have here, and I'm going to leave a link to the, the documentation in the description below where you can go and go to the get started page and it'll show you how to import and get started with Alpine. There's two important aspects to using the Alpine store property to manage global state. The first is the HTML, and the second is the JavaScript. When you come down to the JavaScript, the first thing you're going to notice is that there's an event listener for Alpine init. You need this event listener so that Alpine has the opportunity to initialize before you initialize your own global state. This Alpine object that you use to initialize the global state will not be available before Alpine initializes itself. Inside of the callback of the Alpine init event listener, you're going to use the Alpine object and its property store to create your own global state that comes through as an object. So first thing you're going to do is give it a name. In this case, I'm using person. And then you're going to also give it some properties or the object. So the ob this second parameter that you're feeding through, that is the object that is going to actually be stored as the global state. So in this case, I've given, given the person a name of John Doe, an age of 30, and one function that I can call on this object called handle birthday, which just iterates the age. Now we come to the HTML portion of the page. The first thing to take note of is this x-data property on my container div. If you want to use any of this glo anything in the global state anywhere on this page, you need to add this x data property to one of the parents of the element you're using it on. Now it doesn't matter if it's a direct parent or a parent further up on the ancestry. It does not matter. In this case, I'm using store.person.name. So I'm using the person's name and the person's age and the function here. And this is all within one container. So I put the x data on the container. Now to use the properties and the functions of this object, you need to to use the store property. So I'm going to go ahead and show you here just in plain text. You do dollar sign store and then dot the name of the name of your global state. So you can define multiple global states. So in this case, it'd be person and then dot property. So now you're just inside the object. So name, age, and the function handle birthday are all available to me in this case. And I'll show you how I've used them down below. So X text just injects inside of the element the text that is returned into this uh, from this JavaScript here. So this will return John Doe as we've grabbed it from the uh, the state that we've defined, the global state, and it'll inject that within the span. And same here with the age. And then with the handle birthday, on click. So this is the on click handler for Alpine. It'll run this handled birthday function, which will update the object's age. Now let's go back and take one more look at the application here. So I'm going to refresh. So we start back at age 30 and name John Doe. And when I press it's my birthday, you can see that it iterates and the object's age goes up, the person's age in this case. I hope this video helped and uh, leave a like and subscribe if it did.